is Bob Powers. And today I'm going to do a full shoe shine on these pair of Johnson & Murphys. Um, I'm going to show you the condition beforehand, stop at a couple stages in case you don't want to do the full blown shoe shine and show you some details of why you should take care of your shoes. First of all, these are a pair of uh, Johnson & Murphys. And you can see from the condition of the soles there, you know, they've been worn. You can see some wear on the tip of the toe there where it's, uh, you know, wearing through the thread a little bit, but they're in overall very, very good condition. Another place to look for wear on shoes is um, on the outside of the heels where people walk. Okay, we'll focus uh, right on that heel. So they're in very, you know, good condition, but uh, by all means, but they definitely, um, I'll show you here. You see on the front of the, front of the toes there, you can see where you can see this is a real stitched leather sole, but uh, that, you know, the, the color has come off of there. You can see the toe caps are just, you know, they're not, they're not shiny anymore. They're dirty. They've got streaks, stains. And I'll show you something else interesting here. Most men, let me compare the heels. Now, this is a real stacked leather construction heel. Can you see that? The heel is actually a stacked leather construction. The outside of both heels, you notice a difference? You see here, the right one has definitely got wear on it. And this person in particular, if you can see, can you see right there? It's hard to see in the glare. Right there, this person lays his foot down um, on the side of the shoe while driving and is rubbing, starting to rub the color off of the leather just a little bit. That's not damaged yet. But anyway, you can see usually the, the right side of the right heel will you know, discolor like this much, much quicker, you know, than the left because of, you know, driving a car with the right foot on the gas pedal. So as I go around the shoe, you can see they're not in bad condition at all. Gen ge just really, really need shining. You can see there's some wrinkling on the vamp there, which is normal. You can see this person has been using shoe trees. Okay. See some of that wrinkling there. And we'll get this process started. Now first, here's everything that I'm going to use today on these shoes. Uh, first of all, I've got a traditional horsehair brush. You should use one dark brush for dark colors, i.e. brown here. It should have a different colored one if you're going to do, you know, lighter colored shoes, okay? Different story, different time, but dark color, genuine horsehair brush. I use this small brush here for applying saddle soap, and I'm almost out of saddle soap. I'll explain what this is in a few minutes, but it's basically to clean the leather. Um, and I used to always use Kiwi shoe polish. I'm still using it up. I'm switching, but some brown, by the way, that's brown. Okay. Brown is different from tan. So this color is definitely brown and I'm switching to Sapphire products and this is a neutral, uh, that'll be for the spit shine. And this is just a cotton t-shirt cut up. Okay. So one for color, one for the neutral for the spit shine. Uh, I'm going to use this to clean it against Sapphire, uh, rental mat. This is like a leather, uh, cleaner. Okay. Horribly stinky. Um, powerful, powerful, potent stuff. Um, and this stuff right here is edge dressing, a leather dye. I'm actually going to use this Thieving's leather dye for the, uh, you know, the, the edges of the heels. So that should be everything that I need. Oh, and apply the Saphira Renault Matte leather cleaner, just an old rag that I use, uh, you know, especially just for that. Okay. The first step here is when, especially when they're old and dirty like this and have been cleaned, just take, I'm taking just a, a clean rag. Um, you know, it's a damp, I guess I would say, and just wipe the shoes down. Okay. Try and get in the welt there a little bit. This is damp, not wet, not sopping wet. Okay. Just want to wipe it down. And like I said, try and get in the, uh, you know, the welt there, that area down in there. Okay. Just wipe it off. Okay. Get in those creases. And we're just lifting all the dirt off. Just like if you were going to, you know, wax a car. You wouldn't wax a dirty car. Same thing with your shoes. Get all the dirt off of there, okay? Right. Now, first up here, I've got the uh, the saddle soap, and what I did was I put warm water for the saddle soap. You want to put warm water here in the lid. Um, as you can see, it's, you know, I should have purchased a new one. There's, there's a little bit left, but it's going to get the brush wet. And I, like I said, ideally the saddle soap would, you know, the tin would be full, but this will still work. And with the warm water, the saddle soap. What the saddle soap does is it cleans the leather. Um, it's specifically, you know, formulated for leather, so it's got uh, you know things in it that'll nourish the leather. You see, it's creating a, a lather there. Okay, and I'm gonna have that rag handy again. Okay, 
and the objective here is not really to, to get the shoe sopping wet, right, is not the point. Um, I'm just going to leave the laces in here today, but we're going to just shampoo, get down in the welt there. I'm scrubbing pretty hard, I'm, you know, using some pressure. I want to get the edge of the heel there, okay. It's going to scrub the whole shoe, especially where it flexes and in the creases. And then as soon as, as soon as you get that all lathered up, just take your rag and just wipe it directly off. Just go and wipe it right off. Okay? You don't have to be, you know, scientific about this. But you do want to try and get it out of the welt there. Okay? And it's even looking better, even just from that, isn't it? Trying to get it out of the cracks everywhere that I can. Okay? There you go. Okay, now that the saddle soap, uh, the shoes have been cleaned, I don't know if you can tell, but they already look much, much, much better, okay? So, but uh, if the shoes are not tremendously dirty, um, you know, if they're ones that you, you wear on a regular basis, you can just wipe them down and skip the saddle soap, okay? So the next step here is the colored shoe polish. Now this is called, uh, you know, paste wax, okay? And with this, you can just use a regular little, you know, dabber here like that. Um, I prefer to actually use a old t-shirt and I'm just gonna get a fairly clean section here wrap it one two three a couple times around the pinky and right perfect so now here I'm gonna load it up And I'm just going to start on the toe cap and you're going to use medium pressure and make some circles. By the way, you want to, you know, put it on pretty thick. I mean, you can't really, I guess you can't really put it on too thick. You want to make sure you get down in the crevices there. Okay. I know some people like to use a brush like this to apply uh, the wax. Uh, if you put, too, put it too thick, you're just going to waste wax. I don't think it's going to hurt the shoe to put too much on. Okay. And as I said, I want to get down into the crack there, down into the welt. Okay, now there the toe cap is basically finished. You see how it's taken all the gloss away. That's how you know you've got a good coating. Okay, this will fill in scratches. This will fill in scuffs. I'm going to go with the wrinkles there. You know, leather shoes are always going to, cowhide shoes are, cow, calf skin shoes are, are, are always going to wrinkle across the vamp. So you kind of want to go with those wrinkles. Okay. Sometimes I'll take the laces out. This this case, I'm not taking them out. Try and make sure you get everywhere. Like I said, apply it pretty, pretty liberally, especially anywhere there's scuffing. And if you turn the shoe into the light while you're doing this, um, you know you can definitely tell where you've got it and where you missed it. Okay. Make sure you get this. See right there. There's a little bit of a, a spot there. I don't know if that's a scuff or a scrape, but, you, you know, took some of the color out. We're going to put that on a little heavier there. There's a scratch there. Cover that up real good. Okay. And it looks like there's a thread hanging off there. I'll clip that off later. Now, if you don't have any edge dressing, um, you can use wax to wax the edge of the heel there okay but I'm gonna use dressing edge dressing okay. and there you go I'm gonna let that sit for a couple minutes I'm gonna turn the video off do the other shoe now it's been a couple minutes probably two three minutes maybe four minutes uh, um, since I did the left shoe here so I'm going to take my horsehair brush okay and with this you want to use high speed and high pressure okay so it's a little more awkward to do it on the camera and so you see it is completely hazy, right? So watch what happens just with a few strokes of the brush. Look at that, right? That's just a few strokes, okay? Not bad, not bad. So you're just gonna do the whole shoe to get in the welt, go in between the laces, down the side of the shoe, get the back of the heel, the side of the shoe, 
again down in the welt. Maybe hit the toe cap a second time. Now, you could actually just stop there. If you were to just quit at this point, nobody would, uh, you know, uh, um, fault you, I guess, and your shoe is going to look better than 90% of the people out there anyway. So, um, you know, so that took what, probably literally five to seven minutes. Uh, you know, if you didn't use the saddle soap, if all you did was wipe the shoes off and then polish them and, and brush them, I mean, they're 10 minutes max, okay? So I'm going to stop the video. Uh, I'm going to do the other shoe and then I'll show the next step. Okay, now, as I said a minute ago, the shoes could be considered finished at this point, just like you could wash your car, you know, not wax it, not detail it, and be done. So if you're going to go these next steps, this would be akin to owning a vehicle and detailing the car, okay? So I'm done with the color. Next here is the Saphir, uh, and this is a Pate Deluxe. Uh, this one here, it, it's got, it contains beeswax and pine turpentine. This is, this is amazing stuff, smells wonderful, okay? But this is actually see neutral in color here okay and uh, I'm going to stop the video for a second while I prep okay now I'm prepped and what I did kind of like the saddle soap except this time I used cool water okay you want cold water and this is called the spit shine so what the spit shine is going to do um, if anybody's ever worked on cars, uh, today's modern automobiles, they put down a, a layer of, uh, you know, the paint anyway, they put down a layer of, you know, paint. And if you look at a car that has been painted, but not clear coated, the, the color is actually very dull. Okay. And that's kind of what we're doing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply multiple layers of the neutral, the clear wax polish and build it up over the toe cap but we're only going to do it really here is just on the toe cap we're not going to do it on the vamp work creases because the the wax the thicker layer of wax will flake off and a little bit around the the heel so these are the two areas that they call the hard parts of the shoe that don't flex okay so i'm going to do this first coat fairly heavy you can't really see it on there but i've got the the, the, sh the shoe polish the neutral here and pretty much just like in the beginning i'm going to make some circles trying to get down into the not as critical that I get down into the edge there because this is uh, not as much to protect the shoe uh, but really to make it look awesome and I want to get on the front of the toe cap okay and I'm gonna make sure I get all the way back on the broguing there okay those holes are called broguing so you can see now it's dull again that's good all right so I'm gonna do the other one load it up here a little bit and what we want to do is build up layers. Um, if this has never been done on a shoe, it usually takes, I don't know, three, four, five coats uh, in order to really do it right. The progressive coats get kind of like thinner. Okay. And I might be rushing this a little bit for the purpose of the video. Usually I would let this sit and dry a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and see without letting it really dry anymore. I'm going to see if I can do this. So here's what you do. I haven't you know, change the rag at all. Okay. But I'll put it this way so you can see it. So there's the water. I'm just going to take my ring finger here. You see that when you do that, you get a drop of water and you just put it on the shoe. See that drop of water there? Hope that shows up. All right. So I got a drop of water on the shoe, my rag, and I'm not pressing as firmly, a little bit higher speed and I'm making circles a little bit more. It's hard to describe the feeling of this. Um, when it gets too dry, it kind of drags, I guess I would say. And I don't know if you can tell. Okay, but you're just going to keep doing this. Keep wetting it down. Don't really know what the water does. I don't know if it, I think it helps smooth the wax. I don't know if it combines with the wax so much. But you just keep going back and forth. Speed. I'm really not pressing very hard here. Okay. When it starts to feel like it's dragging, I put some more water down on it, okay? All right. And if you notice, I haven't added any more wax. Okay, there's still probably quite a bit. I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to do this one now.